Monica Blake, a successful black entrepreneur and millionaire, had built her life on resilience and determination. At 45, she was the CEO of a thriving tech company, a self-made success story in an industry where few like her existed. Despite her wealth, Monica stayed grounded, handling everyday tasks herself, including her regular visits to the bank. She believed in maintaining control over all aspects of her life, a lesson she had learned through years of overcoming obstacles. On a bright Tuesday morning, Monica entered the downtown branch of her bank, dressed in a tailored blazer, black slacks, and a white blouse. Her natural hair was neatly styled, and her presence commanded respect. She approached the teller's counter with the same confidence that had driven her success, expecting a routine transaction. However, she was unprepared for the prejudices that would soon surface. The teller, a young white woman named Jessica, noticed Monica's simple yet elegant appearance, but failed to recognize her as one of the bank's most valued clients. Jessica's demeanor, initially indifferent, shifted as she glanced at the sizable check Monica handed her. The amount on the check raised suspicions in Jessica's mind, and her professional facade began to slip, revealing a hint of condescension. Monica could sense the change, but she remained composed, accustomed to the subtle biases that often accompanied her success. Jessica's request for Monica's ID came abruptly, her tone implying doubt about the legitimacy of the transaction. Monica, though slightly taken aback, calmly provided her driver's license. This wasn't the first time she had been underestimated because of her race and gender, and she knew it wouldn't be the last. Jessica examined the ID with unnecessary scrutiny, as if searching for something to justify her suspicion. Jessica's unease grew as she scrutinized the check and ID, her mind clouded by stereotypes and preconceived notions. She was unable to reconcile Monica's appearance with the large sum on the check. Her own biases, shaped by a lifetime of subtle conditioning, led her to question whether Monica could legitimately possess such wealth. Jessica decided to take the matter to her supervisor, seeking validation for her doubts. Monica watched as Jessica walked away, feeling the familiar sting of being judged unfairly. She had faced these assumptions countless times before, people who couldn't believe that a black woman could be wealthy and successful. Each time it was a reminder of the barriers she had overcome, and the ones that still remained. Despite her irritation, Monica knew better than to react impulsively. Instead, she took a deep breath and reminded herself that she had nothing to prove. In the back office, Jessica spoke to her supervisor, a middle-aged man named Mr. Harris. She described Monica in a way that cast doubt on her credibility, her words colored by the prejudices she had unconsciously absorbed. Mr. Harris, however, was more experienced and less quick to judge. If you have concerns, verify the check, but don't jump to conclusions, he advised, sensing that Jessica's judgment might be clouded. Returning to the counter, Jessica tried to maintain her professional demeanor, but the tension between her and Monica was palpable. We just need to make some additional verifications, Jessica said, her voice lacking the warmth that should have accompanied such a statement. Monica, recognizing the implied accusation, responded calmly, I understand. Please take your time. Inside, however, she felt a simmering frustration. As Monica waited at the counter, she couldn't help but notice the sideways glances from other bank employees. It was as if her very presence had disrupted the normal flow of their day. The tension in the room was thick, and Monica could feel the silent judgments forming around her. She had dealt with this before, the quiet assumptions that her success was an anomaly or that she didn't belong in certain spaces. Jessica returned to the counter still unsure of how to proceed. The check was valid, the ID matched, but something in her refused to let go of the suspicion. I'm going to need to get this check cleared with my supervisor, she said, not meeting Monica's eyes. Monica's patience was wearing thin, but she maintained her composure. Is there a problem? She asked, her tone steady but firm. Jessica hesitated, then replied, It's just a large amount. We need to be careful with transactions like this. Her words were laced with the underlying assumption that Monica couldn't possibly have earned such wealth legitimately. Monica understood what was happening. She had encountered this subtle racism before, where her success was questioned simply because of who she was. Despite the rising frustration, Monica knew she needed to stay calm. She had fought too hard to get where she was to let the situation escalate unnecessarily. 
I've been a client here for years, she said, her voice even. This should be a routine transaction. Jessica faltered, caught off guard by Monica's assertiveness. She had expected submission or anger, not this quiet confidence. I'll be right back, Jessica muttered, retreating to the back office once more. As Monica waited, frustration mounting, she considered asking to speak directly with the bank manager. Before she could act, a familiar face entered the bank, Mr. Stevenson, the regional manager. Mr. Stevenson, a tall, distinguished black man in his 50s, had known Monica for years, having overseen many of her business transactions. His entrance immediately shifted the atmosphere in the room. Monica, it's always a pleasure to see you, Mr. Stevenson greeted her warmly, his genuine smile a stark contrast to the coldness she had just experienced. Monica felt a wave of relief, finally encountering someone who saw her for who she was, a successful, respected businesswoman. Mr. Stevenson, it's great to see you too. I'm just trying to deposit a check, but there seems to be some confusion, she explained, her tone reflecting her frustration. Mr. Stevenson quickly assessed the situation, noticing Jessica's nervous demeanor. Is there an issue here? He asked, his tone becoming more serious. Jessica, clearly flustered, stammered, I was just trying to verify the check. It's a large amount. Mr. Stevenson, understanding the implications of what had transpired, turned back to Monica with an apologetic look. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience, Monica. Let me take care of this personally. As Mr. Stevenson processed the check with efficiency and professionalism, Jessica watched in silence, feeling a mix of embarrassment and guilt. She realized that her assumptions had led to this uncomfortable situation, and now she was being corrected by her superior in front of the very client she had wronged. Jessica's face reddened as she handed the process check back to Monica, avoiding eye contact. After completing the transaction, Mr. Stevenson handed Monica her receipt with a sincere apology. I apologize for the inconvenience, Monica. This isn't how we treat our valued clients, and I'll ensure this doesn't happen again. Monica appreciated his professionalism, but the experience had left her with lingering frustration. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. It's disappointing to see this kind of behavior, especially in places where I should feel respected, she responded. Mr. Stevenson's expression grew serious. You're right, and this will be addressed immediately, he promised. Monica nodded, knowing that while the situation had been resolved, the underlying issues were far from being fixed. As she prepared to leave, she gave Jessica a final look, a mix of disappointment and a quiet resolve to not let this moment define her day. Jessica stood at the counter, her mind racing with the implications of what had happened. The guilt of her actions weighed heavily on her, and she realized she had allowed her biases to cloud her judgment. She knew she needed to make things right, but she wasn't sure how to approach it. The experience was a harsh lesson in the dangers of prejudice, and Jessica felt the sting of her mistake. Monica left the bank with a renewed sense of purpose. She had faced countless challenges in her career, but this experience reminded her that there was still work to be done in challenging stereotypes and fighting for equality. She decided that she wouldn't let this incident pass without action. It was time to use her platform to raise awareness about the biases that still pervaded society. That evening, Monica shared her experience on social media, crafting a thoughtful post that detailed the incident at the bank and the broader implications of such biases. She discussed how even as a successful black woman, she was not immune to the prejudices that many people of color face daily. Monica's post was both a personal reflection and a call to action, urging others to confront their own biases and work towards a more equitable society. Her post quickly went viral, resonating with thousands of people who had faced similar situations. The response was overwhelming, with many expressing their support and sharing their own stories of discrimination. Monica's message struck a chord, highlighting the subtle yet pervasive nature of racial bias in everyday interactions. She had turned a moment of personal humiliation into a powerful statement about the need for change. The bank's upper management took notice of the backlash, recognizing the potential damage to their reputation. They reached out to Monica directly, offering a formal apology and requesting a meeting to discuss how they could improve their policies and training to prevent such incidents in the future. Monica agreed to the meeting, seeing it as an opportunity to push for meaningful changes that would benefit not just her, 
but all clients. During the meeting, Monica spoke candidly about her experience and the systemic issues that allowed such biases to persist in professional environments. She emphasized that this incident was not just about her, but about the broader challenges that many people of color faced when interacting with institutions that should serve them without prejudice. Monica's words were direct and impactful, making it clear that she expected the bank to take concrete steps toward addressing these issues. The bank's CEO, along with the head of diversity and inclusion, listened intently to Monica's concerns. They acknowledged the gravity of the situation and expressed their commitment to implementing changes. We deeply regret that this happened, and we are grateful that you brought it to our attention. We want to work with you to ensure this never happens again, the CEO stated earnestly. Monica agreed to collaborate with the bank on their diversity and inclusion initiatives, but she made it clear that she would hold them accountable for their promises. She suggested specific measures, such as mandatory bias training for all employees, a review of hiring and promotion practices, and the establishment of a task force to oversee the implementation of these changes. The bank's leadership agreed to her proposals, understanding that they had a responsibility to address these issues head on. Meanwhile, Jessica was placed on temporary leave as the bank conducted an internal review of the incident. This time away from work gave her the space to reflect deeply on what had happened and how her actions had been influenced by her unconscious biases. Jessica felt a profound sense of shame and regret, but she also recognized that this was an opportunity for personal growth. Jessica sought out resources to educate herself on issues of racial bias and systemic racism. She read books, attended workshops, and engaged in discussions that challenged her to confront her own prejudices and the societal structures that reinforced them. Jessica's journey was not easy. It required her to face uncomfortable truths about herself and the world she lived in. However, she was determined to learn and grow from this experience. As part of her reflection, Jessica reached out to Monica with a heartfelt letter of apology. In it, she expressed her deep regret for the hurt she had caused and acknowledged that her actions were a result of her own biases. Jessica didn't expect forgiveness, but she wanted Monica to know that she was committed to making amends and becoming a better person. Monica received Jessica's letter with mixed emotions. While she appreciated the apology, she knew that real change required more than just words. She responded to Jessica, encouraging her to continue her journey of self-reflection and growth, but also challenging her to become an active advocate for change within the bank. Monica saw potential in Jessica's willingness to learn, but she also understood the importance of accountability. In the weeks following the meeting with Monica, the bank began to implement the changes they had discussed. The first step was introducing mandatory bias training for all employees, from tellers to top executives. This training was designed to help employees recognize their own biases, understand the impact of those biases on their interactions with clients, and develop strategies to overcome them. The training sessions were rigorous and challenging, forcing employees to confront uncomfortable truths about themselves and their assumptions. Monica participated in some of these sessions, sharing her experience and helping to facilitate discussions. Her presence added a personal dimension to the training, making it clear that these were not just abstract concepts, but real issues with tangible consequences. In addition to the training, the bank launched a mentorship program aimed at supporting employees from underrepresented backgrounds. This program paired junior employees with senior leaders who could provide guidance, support, and opportunities for growth within the company. Monica, who was invited to participate as a mentor, gladly accepted. She saw it as an opportunity to help others navigate the challenges she had faced and to ensure that the next generation of leaders would have the support they needed to succeed. The bank also established a task force to monitor the implementation of these initiatives and to ensure that they were making a real impact. This task force included representatives from various departments, as well as external advisors like Monica, who brought valuable perspectives on diversity and inclusion. The bank's leadership made it clear that these changes were not just for show. They were committed to creating a culture where all employees and clients felt valued and respected. And Jessica's return to work marked the beginning of a new chapter in her career. She was reassigned to a role within the bank's diversity and inclusion department, where she could directly contribute to the changes that were taking place. Jessica was determined to use her experience as a catalyst for growth, not just for herself, 
but for the entire organization. In her new role, Jessica was responsible for helping to implement the bank's diversity and inclusion initiatives, working closely with teams across the organization to ensure that the changes were meaningful and lasting. She brought a unique perspective to the role, having experienced firsthand the consequences of unchecked bias and the importance of personal growth. Jessica's journey allowed her to connect with employees on a deeper level, helping them navigate their own paths toward understanding and change. Jessica's responsibilities included facilitating training sessions, developing resources for employees, and working with HR to review and update policies related to diversity and inclusion. She also played a key role in organizing events and workshops that brought employees together to discuss issues of race, privilege, and equity in a safe and supportive environment. Jessica was passionate about her work driven by a desire to create a more inclusive and respectful culture within the bank. As Jessica settled into her new role, she found that her work was both challenging and rewarding. She was often confronted with difficult conversations and resistance from those who were uncomfortable with the changes, but she remained committed to her mission. Jessica's journey from teller to diversity advocate was a testament to the power of self-reflection and the importance of taking responsibility for one's actions. She was proud of the work she was doing and the impact it was having on the bank and its employees. As Monica and Jessica continued their respective journeys, their paths crossed more frequently. What had started as a tense and uncomfortable encounter had evolved into a partnership built on mutual respect and a shared commitment to fostering positive change. Both women understood the power of their story and the impact it could have on others, and they decided to use it as a platform for further advocacy. Monica and Jessica began co-facilitating workshops and speaking at events together, sharing their story as an example of how difficult conversations and personal growth could lead to meaningful change. They were candid about the challenges they had faced, both individually and together, and their honesty resonated with audiences. People were drawn to their story, not just because of the initial conflict, but because of the way they had chosen to move forward and work towards a common goal. Their partnership extended beyond just public speaking. Monica and Jessica also collaborated on developing new training programs and resources for the bank and other organizations. They worked together to create materials that address the complexities of bias, privilege, and inclusion, drawing on their own experiences to make the content relatable and impactful. Their collaboration was a testament to the power of reconciliation and the importance of working together to create lasting change. Over time, Monica and Jessica's partnership grew into a genuine friendship. They continued to challenge each other, pushing one another to grow and learn, but they also supported each other in their personal and professional lives. Their relationship was a reminder that even the most difficult situations could lead to something positive if both parties were willing to engage with empathy and an open mind. The story of Monica and Jessica had a ripple effect that extended far beyond their initial encounter. It inspired others to reflect on their own biases, question their assumptions, and take action to create more inclusive environments. The lessons learned from their experience were shared in boardrooms, classrooms, and communities, sparking conversations about race, privilege, and the importance of empathy. In the corporate world, more and more companies began to implement diversity and inclusion initiatives, recognizing the importance of creating workplaces where everyone felt valued and respected. Monica and Jessica were often invited to consult with these companies, helping them navigate the challenges of addressing bias and building a more inclusive culture. Their story was used as a case study in training programs, providing a powerful example of the impact that unchecked bias could have and the potential for growth and reconciliation. The ripple effect also reached educational institutions where Monica and Jessica's story was included in curricula focused on social justice, diversity, and inclusion. Students were encouraged to engage with the story, reflect on their own experiences, and consider the ways in which they could contribute to creating a more just and equitable society. Monica and Jessica were invited to speak at schools and universities, where they shared their story and encouraged students to be agents of change. The impact of Monica and Jessica's story was also felt in the community, where it inspired grassroots movements and initiatives aimed at addressing bias and promoting inclusion. Community organizations, advocacy groups, and activists use the story as a rallying cry, 
encouraging others to take action and stand up against injustice. The ripple effect of Monica and Jessica's journey showed that even a single incident, when addressed with courage and empathy, could lead to widespread change and inspire others to do the same. As the years passed, Monica and Jessica's impact continued to resonate within their community and beyond. Their story had become a beacon of hope and inspiration for many, showing that it was possible to confront prejudice, grow from it, and create something positive out of a negative experience. Their work had led to tangible changes in the bank, in the corporate world, and in the lives of countless individuals who had been touched by their message. Monica continued to lead her successful tech company, but her legacy was now also defined by her tireless advocacy for diversity and inclusion. She remained a sought-after speaker and consultant, sharing her insights and experience with organizations around the world. Monica's influence extended far beyond her industry as she became a voice for change in business, education, and community development. Jessica's role within the bank evolved as well. She became a key figure in the bank's diversity and inclusion efforts, helping to shape the policies and programs that would guide the organization into the future. Her journey from teller to advocate was a testament to the power of personal transformation and the importance of taking responsibility for one's actions. Jessica's work was recognized not just within the bank, but across the industry as she became a leader in promoting equity and inclusion. Together, Monica and Jessica left a legacy of change that would endure long after their story began. They had shown that it was possible to bridge divides, to learn from one another, and to work together to create a better world. Their partnership was a reminder that even in the face of adversity, there was always the potential for growth, understanding, and positive change. As they looked to the future, they knew that their work was not finished, but they were confident that the foundation they had built would continue to inspire and empower others for generations to come. Monica and Jessica's efforts did not stop with their work within the bank or their public speaking engagements. They realized that the impact they wanted to achieve required a grassroots approach, one that involved directly engaging with the communities that were most affected by issues of bias and inequality. Together, they founded a nonprofit organization focused on providing resources, mentorship, and educational opportunities to underrepresented groups. The organization, named Bridges for Change, quickly became a beacon of hope for many. Monica and Jessica used their platform to gather support from corporations, community leaders, and individuals who shared their vision for a more equitable society. Through workshops, scholarships, and mentorship programs, Bridges for Change empowered young people and provided them with the tools they needed to succeed in a world that often underestimated them. Monica was deeply involved in the organization, leveraging her business acumen to ensure its success. She worked tirelessly to secure funding, forge partnerships, and develop programs that address the unique challenges faced by the communities they served. Monica's leadership was characterized by her unwavering commitment to making a difference and her ability to inspire others to join her cause. Jessica took on a different but equally important role within the organization. Drawing from her own experiences, she led the educational and training initiatives, focusing on helping individuals recognize and overcome their biases. Jessica's workshops were known for being candid and transformative, pushing participants to confront uncomfortable truths and emerge with a greater understanding of themselves and the world around them. Despite their success, Monica and Jessica faced numerous challenges along the way. There were moments when the weight of their work seemed overwhelming and the resistance they encountered felt insurmountable. Both women had to navigate the complexities of leading an organization that was dedicated to addressing deeply entrenched social issues, often facing pushback from those who were uncomfortable with the changes they were advocating for. One of the most significant challenges they faced was securing sustainable funding for their programs. While they received initial support from corporations and donors who believed in their mission, maintaining that support required constant effort. Monica spent countless hours meeting with potential donors, explaining the importance of their work and the impact it was having. Her persistence paid off, but it was a continuous struggle to ensure that Bridges for Change had the resources it needed to thrive. Jessica, on the other hand, dealt with the emotional toll of the work, facilitating workshops and training sessions that delved into issues of race, privilege, and this was emotionally exhausting. 
She often found herself absorbing the pain and struggles of those who participated in her sessions, many of whom had faced discrimination and prejudice throughout their lives. Jessica had to learn to balance her empathy with the need to protect her own well-being, ensuring that she could continue to be effective in her role. Despite these challenges, Monica and Jessica never lost sight of their goals. They leaned on each other for support, drawing strength from their partnership and the shared understanding of what was at stake. Their determination to create lasting change kept them moving forward, even when the path was difficult. The impact of Bridges for Change was felt far and wide. The organization's mentorship programs helped countless young people gain access to educational opportunities and career paths that had previously seemed out of reach. Graduates of the programs went on to become leaders in their fields, often returning to the organization to mentor the next generation. This cycle of empowerment created a ripple effect, spreading the values of equity and inclusion throughout the community. Monica and Jessica also made it a priority to involve the communities they served in the leadership and decision-making processes of the organization. They established advisory boards made up of community members ensuring that the programs were responsive to the needs and realities of those they aimed to help. This approach fostered a sense of ownership and collaboration, making Bridges for Change a true community-driven initiative. The organization's workshops and training sessions became a model for others looking to address issues of bias and inclusion in their own settings. Schools, businesses, and other nonprofits sought out Bridges for Change to help them develop their own programs and Monica and Jessica found themselves in high demand as consultants and advisors. The success of their organization demonstrated that meaningful change was possible when individuals and communities came together with a shared purpose. Monica and Jessica's work also began to attract media attention. Stories about the success of Bridges for Change and the transformative impact it was having on individuals and communities were featured in newspapers, magazines, and television programs. This increased visibility helped to amplify their message and attract even more support for their cause. While Monica and Jessica were proud of the work they were doing, they also recognized the personal toll it was taking on them. The demands of running a nonprofit, managing their public personas, and continuously advocating for change were immense. Both women had to navigate the challenges of balancing their professional commitments with their personal lives, often finding themselves stretched thin. Monica, in particular, struggled with maintaining the balance between her business and her advocacy work. Her tech company continued to grow, and she was constantly juggling the responsibilities of being a CEO with her role in Bridges for Change. Monica was deeply committed to both, but she sometimes felt the strain of trying to be everything to everyone. She knew that something had to give, and she began to consider how she could delegate more responsibilities within her company to focus on her passion for social change. Jessica also faced her own challenges. Her journey of personal growth and her role in diversity and inclusion had made her more aware of the systemic issues that needed to be addressed, but it also left her feeling overwhelmed by the magnitude of the work. Jessica often found herself questioning whether she was doing enough or if she was the right person to lead such a critical effort. These doubts weighed heavily on her, but she continued to push forward, driven by the belief that the work she was doing was too important to abandon. Both women leaned on their friendship to get through these difficult times. They often confided in each other, sharing their fears, frustrations, and moments of doubt. Their bond provided them with the strength they needed to continue, and they reminded each other of the impact they were making. Monica and Jessica knew that their work was not just about the present. It was about laying the foundation for a better future. As Monica and Jessica's organization continued to grow, they took time to reflect on the journey that had brought them to this point. They both understood that their story was not just about the confrontation in the bank, but about the transformation that had followed. Their journey had taught them valuable lessons about the importance of empathy, accountability, and the power of working together to create change. Monica reflected on how far she had come since the early days of her career. She had built a successful company from the ground up, but her work with Bridges for Change had become an equally important part of her legacy. Monica knew that her success in business had given her a platform, and she was determined to use it to amplify the voices of those who were often silenced. Her advocacy work had become a calling, and she felt a deep sense of fulfillment in knowing that she was making a difference. Jessica, too, had undergone a significant transformation. 
The experience at the bank had forced her to confront her own biases and the ways in which she had been complicit in systems of oppression. Jessica's journey of self-reflection had been difficult, but it had also been deeply rewarding. She had found a sense of purpose in her work, and she was proud of the progress she had made. Jessica knew that she still had much to learn, but she was committed to continuing her journey of growth. As they reflected on their journey, Monica and Jessica realized that their story was not just about them. It was about the countless individuals who had been inspired by their example, the communities that had been empowered, and the systems that were slowly beginning to change. They understood that their work was far from over, but they also knew that they had already made a significant impact. With the success of Bridges for Change, Monica and Jessica began to consider how they could expand their mission to reach even more people. They knew that the need for their work extended far beyond their local community, and they wanted to create a model that could be replicated in other areas. The idea of expanding their organization to a national level began to take shape, and they set out to make it a reality. The first step in this expansion was to establish partnerships with other nonprofits, educational institutions, and community organizations across the country. Monica and Jessica reached out to like-minded leaders and organizations, sharing their vision and inviting others to join them in their mission. These partnerships allowed them to extend the reach of their programs and bring their message of empowerment and inclusion to new communities. Monica also used her connections in the business world to secure funding for the expansion. She met with corporate leaders and philanthropists, making a compelling case for why their support was needed. Monica's passion and persistence paid off, and they were able to secure the resources needed to launch new chapters of Bridges for Change in several cities across the country. Now, Jessica took on the role of overseeing the development of these new chapters, ensuring that the core values and mission of the organization were maintained. She traveled frequently, meeting with local leaders, training new staff, and adapting the programs to fit the specific needs of each community. Jessica's dedication to the mission was evident in every aspect of her work, and she was determined to ensure that Bridges for Change would have the same impact on a national level as it had in their local community. As Bridges for Change expanded its reach, it began to gain national recognition for its innovative approach to addressing issues of bias and inequality. The organization was featured in major media outlets, and Monica and Jessica were invited to speak at conferences and events across the country. Their story of transformation and collaboration resonated with audiences, and they were praised for their leadership and vision. The success of Bridges for Change also attracted the attention of policymakers and government officials. Monica and Jessica were invited to testify before congressional committees on issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. They shared their insights and experiences, advocating for policies that would support underrepresented communities and create more opportunities for those who had been historically marginalized. Monica and Jessica's work was also recognized with numerous awards and honors. They were named as recipients of prestigious awards for their contributions to social justice and community empowerment. These accolades were a testament to the impact they were making. But Monica and Jessica remained focused on the work itself, knowing that there was still much to be done. The national recognition brought new opportunities and challenges. As the organization grew, Monica and Jessica had to navigate the complexities of managing a larger operation while staying true to their original mission. They were determined to ensure that Bridges for Change remained a community-driven initiative, even as it expanded to new regions. This required careful planning, collaboration, and a commitment to continuous learning. As Monica and Jessica looked to the future, they felt a sense of excitement and anticipation. They had accomplished so much together, but they knew that their journey was far from over. The success of Bridges for Change had opened up new possibilities, and they were eager to explore how they could continue to make a difference. One of the areas they decided to focus on was education. Monica and Jessica knew that lasting change required reaching people at a young age, before biases and prejudices had a chance to take root. They began developing programs specifically designed for schools, with the goal of teaching children about diversity, empathy, and the importance of inclusion from an early age. These programs were designed to be engaging, interactive, and empowering, helping students to understand the value of embracing differences. 
Monica also began to consider how she could transition more of her time and energy to her advocacy work. She had built a successful tech company, but her passion for social justice had become a driving force in her life. Monica started to prepare her company for a future where she could take on a more strategic role, allowing her to dedicate more time to Bridges for Change and other initiatives. She was confident in her leadership team and knew that they could continue to grow the company while she focused on her new mission. I Jessica, too, was looking ahead with a sense of purpose. She wanted to continue her work in diversity and inclusion, but she also felt a calling to write about her experiences. Jessica began working on a book that would detail her journey from the fateful day in the bank to her transformation into an advocate for change. She hoped that by sharing her story, she could inspire others to reflect on their own biases and take steps towards creating a more inclusive world. As Bridges for Change continued to grow, Monica and Jessica took pride in the legacy they were building. They had created an organization that not only addressed immediate needs, but also empowered individuals and communities to create lasting change. Their programs had touched the lives of thousands, providing them with the tools and support they needed to overcome barriers and achieve their full potential. Monica and Jessica's work had also helped to shift the conversation about diversity and inclusion in the corporate world. More and more companies were beginning to recognize the importance of creating inclusive environments, and many were looking to bridges for change for guidance. Monica's expertise in business, combined with Jessica's insights into bias and equity, made them valuable advisors to organizations that were committed to making a difference. The impact of their work extended beyond the United States. Bridges for Change began to receive inquiries from international organizations that wanted to implement similar programs in their own countries. Monica and Jessica saw this as an opportunity to take their mission global, and they began exploring ways to adapt their model to different cultural contexts. They were excited about the possibility of expanding their reach and bringing their message of empowerment and inclusion to a global audience. Monica and Jessica knew that their legacy was not just about the programs they had created, but about the people they had inspired. They had empowered countless individuals to take action, to challenge injustice, and to work towards a more equitable society. This ripple effect was perhaps their greatest achievement, as it ensured that the impact of their work would continue to grow long after they were gone. As Monica and Jessica approached the next chapter of their lives, they took time to reflect on the journey that had brought them to this point. They both understood that their story was not just about the confrontation in the bank, but about the transformation that had followed. Their journey had taught them valuable lessons about the importance of empathy, accountability, and the power of working together to create change. Monica reflected on how far she had come since the early days of her career. She had built a successful company from the ground up, but her work with Bridges for Change had become an equally important part of her legacy. Monica knew that her success in business had given her a platform, and she was determined to use it to amplify the voices of those who were often silenced. Her advocacy work had become a calling, and she felt a deep sense of fulfillment in knowing that she was making a difference. Jessica, too, had undergone a significant transformation. The experience at the bank had forced her to confront her own biases and the ways in which she had been complicit in systems of oppression. Jessica's journey of self-reflection had been difficult, but it had also been deeply rewarding. She had found a sense of purpose in her work, and she was proud of the progress she had made. Jessica knew that she still had much to learn, but she was committed to continuing her journey of growth. As they reflected on their journey, Monica and Jessica realized that their story was not just about them. It was about the countless individuals who had been inspired by their example, the communities that had been empowered, and the systems that were slowly beginning to change. They understood that their work was far from over, but they also knew that they had already made a significant impact. Monica and Jessica's commitment to mentorship became a central part of their work. They both understood the importance of guiding the next generation of leaders, particularly those from underrepresented backgrounds. They created formal mentorship programs through Bridges for Change, connecting young people with experienced professionals who could offer advice, support, and opportunities for growth. Monica was particularly passionate about mentoring young women in business. She knew firsthand the challenges they faced in navigating a male-dominated industry, 
and she wanted to provide them with the tools and confidence they needed to succeed. Monica's mentorship was characterized by her direct, no-nonsense approach, combined with her deep empathy and understanding of the unique challenges these young women faced. Jessica also took on a mentorship role, focusing on individuals who were interested in diversity and inclusion work. She shared her journey candidly, using her experiences as a way to teach others about the importance of self-reflection, empathy, and the need to continuously challenge one's own assumptions. Jessica's mentorship was deeply impactful, helping many young people find their voice and their place in the fight for social justice. The mentorship programs quickly became one of the most successful aspects of Bridges for Change. They provided young people with the guidance and support they needed to navigate their careers and make a difference in their communities. Monica and Jessica were proud of the program's success, but they were even prouder of the individuals who had gone on to become leaders in their own right. Despite their many successes, Monica and Jessica faced ongoing challenges in their work. The fight for diversity, equity, and inclusion was far from over, and there were still many obstacles to overcome. They encountered resistance from those who were uncomfortable with the changes they were advocating for, and there were times when progress felt slow or stalled. Monica and Jessica both had to learn to navigate these challenges with resilience and determination. They drew strength from each other and from the communities they served. They also leaned on their team at Bridges for Change, who shared their passion and commitment to the mission. Together, they were able to push through the difficult moments and continue to move forward. One of the most significant challenges they faced was the need to constantly adapt to changing social and political landscapes. As issues of race and equity became more prominent in the national conversation, Monica and Jessica found themselves at the forefront of these discussions. They were often called upon to provide insight and leadership, and they had to balance their responsibilities with the need to stay true to their values and their mission. Despite the challenges, Monica and Jessica remained optimistic about the future. They knew that the work they were doing was important, and they were committed to seeing it through. Their resilience was a testament to their dedication and their belief in the power of change. They understood that the journey was long and difficult, but they were determined to keep moving forward. As Bridges for Change continued to grow, Monica and Jessica began to explore opportunities to expand their mission globally. They recognized that the issues they were addressing were not unique to the United States, and they wanted to bring their message of empowerment and inclusion to a global audience. They began to form partnerships with organizations and leaders in other countries, sharing their model and adapting it to different cultural contexts. The first step in their global expansion was to establish pilot programs in a few select countries. They worked closely with local leaders to understand the unique challenges faced by each community and to develop programs that were culturally relevant and impactful. Monica and Jessica traveled extensively, meeting with partners and overseeing the implementation of these programs. They were excited about the possibilities and eager to see the impact of their work on a global scale. Monica and Jessica also began to participate in international conferences and events where they shared their experiences and insights with a global audience. Their story resonated with people from all over the world, and they were often approached by individuals and organizations who wanted to learn more about how they could implement similar programs in their own countries. The global expansion of Bridges for Change was a significant milestone for Monica and Jessica. It allowed them to extend their reach and make an impact on a much larger scale. They were proud of what they had accomplished, but they knew that this was just the beginning. They were committed to continuing their work and to bringing their message of empowerment and inclusion to as many people as possible. As Monica and Jessica continued their work, they began to think about the future of Bridges for Change and how they could ensure that their mission would continue long after they were gone. They knew that the organization needed strong leadership and a clear vision to sustain its impact, and they were committed to preparing the next generation of leaders to carry on their work. Monica and Jessica began to mentor and train a group of emerging leaders within the organization, providing them with the guidance and support they needed to take on more significant roles. They also worked closely with the board of directors to develop a strategic plan for the future of the organization, ensuring that it would continue to grow and thrive. One of the key aspects of their succession planning was to ensure that Bridges for Change remained true to its mission and values. Monica and Jessica were adamant 
that the organization should always be community-driven and focused on empowering those who were most in need. They work to instill these principles in the next generation of leaders, ensuring that the organization's impact would endure. Passing the torch was not easy for Monica and Jessica, but they knew that it was necessary for the continued success of the organization. They were confident in the leaders they had trained and were excited to see how they would take the organization to new heights. Monica and Jessica remained involved as advisors, but they also took a step back, allowing the new leaders to take the reins. As Monica and Jessica transitioned to their new roles as advisors, they both took time to reflect on their personal journeys and how far they had come. They had both experienced significant growth and transformation, and they were proud of the impact they had made. Their friendship had been a source of strength and support, and they were grateful for the partnership they had built. Monica, who had spent so much of her life focused on her career, began to explore new interests and passions. She had always been passionate about social justice, but she also wanted to take time to enjoy life and explore the world. Monica traveled, spent time with family and friends, and pursued hobbies that brought her joy. She knew that her work with Bridges for Change would always be a part of her legacy, but she was also excited to embrace new experiences. Jessica, too, took time to reflect on her journey. She had come a long way from the day she first encountered Monica at the bank, and she was proud of the person she had become. Jessica continued to write her book, hoping to share her story with a broader audience. She also became more involved in her community, volunteering with local organizations and mentoring young people who were interested in diversity and inclusion work. Both women remained committed to their mission, but they also recognized the importance of self-care and balance. They had given so much of themselves to their work, and they knew that it was important to take time to recharge and focus on their own well-being. Monica and Jessica's journey was one of growth, resilience, and empowerment, and they were determined to continue living their lives with purpose and passion. As Monica and Jessica looked back on their journey, they were struck by the lasting impact of their work. Bridges for Change had become a powerful force for good, touching the lives of thousands and creating a ripple effect that would continue for generations. Their story had inspired countless individuals to take action, to challenge injustice, and to work towards a more inclusive and equitable world. Monica and Jessica's work had also helped to shift the conversation about diversity and inclusion in the corporate world. More and more companies were beginning to recognize the importance of creating inclusive environments and many were looking to Bridges for Change for guidance. Monica's expertise in business, combined with Jessica's insights into bias and equity, made them valuable advisors to organizations that were committed to making a difference. The impact of their work extended beyond the United States. Bridges for Change began to receive inquiries from international organizations that wanted to implement similar programs in their own countries. Monica and Jessica saw this as an opportunity to take their mission global, and they began exploring ways to adapt their model to different cultural contexts. They were excited about the possibility of expanding their reach and bringing their message of empowerment and inclusion to a global audience. Monica and Jessica knew that their legacy was not just about the programs they had created, but about the people they had inspired. They had empowered countless individuals to take action, to challenge injustice, and to work towards a more equitable society. This ripple effect was perhaps their greatest achievement, as it ensured that the impact of their work would continue to grow, long after they were gone. One of the most significant lessons Monica and Jessica had learned on their journey was the power of partnership. Their friendship and collaboration had been the driving force behind their success, and they knew that their work would not have been possible without each other's support. They had both brought different strengths and perspectives to the table, and together they had created something greater than either could have achieved alone. Monica and Jessica's partnership was a testament to the importance of collaboration and mutual respect. They had faced challenges and disagreements, but they had always found a way to work through them and come out stronger on the other side. Their ability to listen, to learn, and to support each other had been the foundation of their success and it was a lesson they hoped to pass on to others. As they continued their work, Monica and Jessica remained committed to fostering partnerships with other organizations and leaders. They knew that the fight for diversity, equity, and inclusion required collective effort, and they were eager to bring more voices and perspectives into the conversation. 
Monica and Jessica's partnership was not just about their own journey, but about building a movement that would continue to grow and evolve. Their story was a reminder that meaningful change was possible when people came together with a shared purpose and a willingness to learn from each other. Monica and Jessica had shown that even in the face of adversity, there was always the potential for growth, understanding, and positive change. Their partnership was a source of inspiration, and they were determined to continue building bridges and creating opportunities for others to join them on their journey. As Monica and Jessica looked to the future, they felt a sense of excitement and anticipation. They had accomplished so much together, but they knew that their journey was far from over. The success of Bridges for Change had opened up new possibilities, and they were eager to explore how they could continue to make a difference. One of the areas they decided to focus on was education. Monica and Jessica knew that lasting change required reaching people at a young age before biases and prejudices had a chance to take root. They began developing programs specifically designed for schools with the goal of teaching children about diversity, empathy, and the importance of inclusion from an early age. These programs were designed to be engaging, interactive, and empowering, helping students to understand the value of embracing differences. Monica also began to consider how she could transition more of her time and energy to her advocacy work. She had built a successful tech company, but her passion for social justice had become a driving force in her life. Monica started to prepare her company for a future where she could take on a more strategic role, allowing her to dedicate more time to Bridges for Change and other initiatives. She was confident in her leadership team and knew that they could continue to grow the company while she focused on her new mission. Jessica, too, was looking ahead with a sense of purpose. She wanted to continue her work in diversity and inclusion, but she also felt a calling to write about her experiences. Jessica began working on a book that would detail her journey from the fateful day in the bank to her transformation into an advocate for change. She hoped that by sharing her story, she could inspire others to reflect on their own biases and take steps towards creating a more inclusive world. Monica and Jessica knew that their work was far from over, but they were excited about the future. They had built something truly special together, and they were determined to continue their journey, bringing their message of empowerment and inclusion to new audiences and new communities. Their story was one of growth, resilience, and hope, and they were committed to making a lasting impact on the world.